great. So we have an EC2 server configured. We have all the networking around it configured. However, there is nothing running on that server yet, right? We have no Docker installed. We have no Docker containers running. So basically the server is empty. Now we can, of course, SSH into the server. We can install Docker on it. We can start a Docker container and so on. However, again, we want to automate as much of a work as possible and we don't want to do manual work and we want that configuration to be part of the code, right? We want that to be in the file that we can execute as many times as we want. So with the Terraform, there is a way to execute commands on a server, on EC2 server, in this case, at the time of creation, right? So as soon as the instance is ready, we can define a set of commands that Terraform will execute on the server. And the way to do that is using an attribute called user data. So user data is basically like an entry point script that gets executed on EC2 instance whenever the server is instantiated, right? So this is the initial script and we can provide the script actually using multiline string and we can define it using the syntax. So we have this block and inside that block we can actually define the whole shell script, right? Just like you would write it in a normal script file, right? In a bash file. And since it's a Linux, we can write bash commands. So exactly like you would execute it on the server itself with Linux commands, the same way we're going to write the commands in here. So we're going to start with a shebang first of all, so that it's a bash script. And then we're going to start the commands. Now, obviously you have to know these commands. You have to try this out to make sure that they work, but I have tried them out. So I'm just going to write them. They're actually not very difficult. So what we're going to do is on our fresh new server, we're going to do yum update. So we're going to update all the packages, uh, the repositories first. And since it's not an interactive mode, we can't confirm the input, right? We're going to do automatic confirmation. That's what minus Y stands for. So I'm inside the server now. So basically you can check which package manager you have. We have yum here in Amazon Linux image. And when you do update, you get this prompt here, right? So you have to confirm whether to continue or not. So in this case, we click yes. And this is basically the same confirmation that we are writing. So this confirms and then we can do again, sudo yum install docker. So after the update, we're going to install Docker so that we can execute Docker commands. And once the Docker is installed, we have to start it and we can do it using system control start Docker. And these are all pseudo commands because EC2 user doesn't have permission to install stuff. So we're going to have to do that with sudo. And then we want to execute docker commands without sudo command, right? And for that, we're going to need to add the EC2 user to docker group. And we're going to do that using user mod or modifying the user, adding it to a group. That's what this stands for. Group name docker, username EC2 user. This is the user that we are SSHing into. This is the default Linux user that we have available on these Linux images. Right, so as I said, this command will basically add our user in Docker group and that will make it possible for us to run Docker commands on that server without sudo. So now we can do Docker run. And as I mentioned, we can start a very simple Nginx container on port 80 
or port 8080 on the host and bind it to port 80 on nginx. And this will be basically it. So these are the commands we want to execute right away after server is created. And this will make nginx basically available on the server. And we are saving manual effort for SSHing into the server, installing all this, running container and so on. So this should all be executed automatically by Terraform. So let's save it. And now let's actually do Terraform plan to see the changes that will be made. So let's clean this up. I have too many tabs open. So Terraform plan. And I'm just gonna close two of these. And let's see. So summary here, one resource will be destroyed, one resource will be added. And let's scroll up. And you see that the change that we just made, which is adding this user data execution here, actually forces the previous server or previous EC2 instance, this one to be destroyed and new one to be created. So this is a change that will recreate the whole instance, which is fine for us. So we're gonna just apply. So while this is applying, note that this block here will only get executed once, right? So for example, if we make changes to the tags, which will be basically just modifying existing server, like we just add another key pair here, something else and the whole thing gets re-executed this will only be executed once right on initial run so just keep that in mind so let's go back and you see that server the previous one is getting destroyed and let's wait a couple of seconds until the new one comes up and this time we actually added output ec2 public ip so we should see that in an output here, instead of going to the management console to get the public IP address of the new EC2 instance, it will just save us some time. And there you go. As you see, the new public IP address is printed out here. And now if we grab this public IP address and SSH into the server, and now hopefully all of these commands should have executed. And if we do docker ps, there you go, we see our nginx container already up and running. And the port binding is already in place. Now, we already configured security group for that. So port 8080 should be accessible from browser as well. So that means that on this public IP address, on port 8080, we should see Nginx welcome page. So everything is working, our setup is done. So this is a very simple but realistic configuration of creating a new VPC with all the different configurations, connecting to internet, configuring the firewall rules, deploying EC2 instance, and also running some entry point script so that Docker gets installed and Docker container starts running on it. Now, of course, if you have a much longer and maybe more complicated script that you want to execute as an entry point script when the server starts, maybe you are installing a couple of different tools and configuring uh, lots of different stuff, you can also reference it from a file instead of having it inside the Terraform configuration file. Right, so I'm just gonna delete this or copy this. And just like we did right here, we can very simply reference a file here and we can pass in the file location. And let's say this is an entry, entry script.sh. So this is gonna be a shell script that Terraform will execute on the server and this is actually a location or a relative path. So 
we can create a file called entryscript entryscript.sh inside our terraform folder so i'm going to do entry script.sh and i'm going to paste in what i copied and obviously we don't need this block here it was just um, to have a multi-line string uh, right here in Terraform. This is just a very normal shell script and this will work as well. So if I save it and do Terraform plan and let's actually see the Terraform action and as you see, this change also will cause EC2 instance to be recreated or a new one to be created. Let's actually go ahead and do that. And let's actually check out the new public IP address real quick to make sure it is working. And there you go. We get the same welcome to Nginx page. So this is actually cleaner because we're separating the shell script from Terraform configuration file by just referencing the file instead of having the whole script um, inside the configuration file in here. So as I said, we can write a bunch of more stuff in here that installs, configures, deploys applications and stuff on the server. And now as a final step, we can actually check all of this code into a separate feature branch and push it to the remote repository. So we can do git checkout and we're going to create a new branch and let's call it feature deploy to EC2 with default components. And now we have all the changes that we made in the master branch um, transferred to this new branch. And here we can just add everything and commit the new configuration. And finally, we can just push the whole branch to remote repository.